differential and algebraic equations are composed of differential terms and equations along with algebraic equations. And I'll just say that's zero equals g of x. Now there's an important characteristic of these equations, and that is the number of times that this algebraic equation, okay, these are differential equations, or if you just have just differential equations, then you'd say ODE, all right? But uh, if we just have differential equations and algebraic equations, the index is referred to the number of times that you need to differentiate that algebraic equation to get it back to an ordinary differential equation form. So it's a number of times that you have to take the uh, differential of this to get it back to that differential equation form. Now, you can use Pantelides algorithm to do that. Uh, I'm gonna show you a way to be able to solve these types of differential and algebraic equations without rearrangement. And we're gonna use as an example, a pendulum. So if we look at a pendulum, such as, for example, this uh, USB drive on this string, and the equations of motion of this are fairly simple. It's a equ uh, simple equation, but the most natural way to write this, starting from an initial condition and then tracking its progress, okay, the, the motion of that pendulum, is an index three differential algebraic equation. All right, so index three DAE. And the form of that, when we look at the form, that's just, um, let me go ahead and just write this, okay, where we have a pendulum. All right, and it might be, you know, over to the side like that. We are, we're going to have, um, you know, x and y, all right? So this is going to be our x, and this is gonna be our y. And then we also have the velocity, okay, in the x direction, and then the velocity in the y direction. Okay, so there's a couple differential equations right there. And then those are related, the position of x and y are related because this pendulum is length s. And so the index three differential equation, differential algebraic equation form is that we would add an equation x squared plus y squared equals s squared. Now this equation right here, we'd have to differentiate it three times to get it back to an ordinary differential equation form. So let's do that once. If we differentiate it once, okay, then we'd have an index two, and that is going to be x times v plus w times uh, y equals zero. That's our index two form. So we've just differentiated that equation once. Now, the next time we differentiate it, we also have to add a Lagrange multiplier to this. Okay, so that one is gonna be m v squared plus w squared minus gy, okay, minus two, and then our Lagrange uh, term there. All right, and then we have x squared plus y squared, and that equals zero, and that is our index one form. All right, and then our index zero form, we get it back to this uh, ODE form, then we have d lambda dt equals negative four lambda xv plus yw, okay, divided by x squared plus y squared. All right, so there are the three forms right there. Now, you'll see here this chart. I've simulated these, these four forms, and you can see index three right there, that's the red. Um, and then you can also see the other two, they have no drift, but you see when we get back to the index zero, DAE, that's our ODE, that we start seeing things like numerical drift, 
All right, and then you also see, you know, this Y value starts trending down over time. So just with the index zero, if you get it back to the ODE form, then you might have some numerical issues. Also, there are many solvers that can solve an index one form. Many of the solvers in Python or MATLAB can solve that ODE15S is a good example of a DAE solver in MATLAB. Okay, so, and that can also solve the index one DAE form. It can also solve an index two in the Hessenberg form. So there's a couple options for solvers that are out there. But let's say we just wanted to solve it in index three form. So I'm going to show you, first of all, the index three form. And then let's go back and do the index uh, zero form, the ODE form as well. OK, so I'm just going to type this out or have Notepad type this out for me. OK, so here I have the model. You can see the equation. This is our x squared plus y squared equals s squared. And then we have our other uh, equations there that relate the velocity of, in the w and, OK, in the v or the x and y uh, directions, you can see some of those. Okay, we do have the Lagrange multiplier there as well. Okay, so there are the five differential equations that relate uh, these different variables to each other, and then we also have some supporting variables as well. All right, so let's go ahead and um, solve this one. I just want to show this one to you. I'll do the index three one first of all. And the way that it does this is it uses orthogonal collocation on finite elements and solves it with large scale and sparse solvers. So you don't need to uh, be able to transform it into an ODE form or an index one DAE form. It solves it directly as an index three differential and algebraic equation problem. Now you can see here there's no numerical drift the position x and y those are stable from cycle to cycle and um, so overall this solution looks good let's go ahead and do our next one now which is going to be the index zero da all right so i'm going to have let's go ahead and close this one close this one i'm using notepad plus plus to do some ghost typing for me animate this a little bit okay it's kind of fast there a little bit uh, too fast for explaining the code but essentially I'm just creating the gecko model and you could solve this problem with almost any ODE integrator you'll see that all of these now are in this differential equation format where all of Okay, all of them are on this left-hand side of the equation, and you could set up an ODE solver pretty easily to solve this. Okay, and let's go ahead and simulate it, though, and just see the results of this. So I'm going to show this with Ideally. Go ahead and edit and run it. And you'll see some examples here of that numerical drift that I was talking about. So here in the top plot, plot, you can see the Y value, how it's trending down over time. You can also see the Lambda value at the very bottom, how that one is also trending down over time. So it's just this numerical drift because we've had to differentiate it three times to get it back to the ordinary differential equation form. So one of the other advantages of um, Solving this with this simultaneous method and be able to solve these higher index forms is that you don't necessarily need to rearrange the equations to get them back into a particular form. You could solve it with the ones that are most uh, natural to write, like straight out of a textbook, for example. You don't need to make a lot of rearrangement. You'll notice this especially in situations where you have something like a distillation column. Okay, you'll see that those are going to traditionally be something like at least an index one or an index two DAE. I've seen a lot of people that have to rearrange 
okay, the equations to get them into the index one form. It takes a lot of rearrangement to be able to simulate uh, diff uh, this distillation column to get into that particular form. But if you can just solve it directly as an index two or index three problem, then you can focus on the equations and don't have to focus so much on rearranging the equations to fit a particular solver that can only handle certain forms. So the other nice thing about this too is I wrote it out at the beginning, um, you know, this way for my differential equations and then zero equals g of x. The other nice thing is that you don't even have to have this in the semi-explicit form like that. You can have everything on one side of the equation or the other. So it's actually more like uh, this that I've just put in this box that you don't even have to have the differential terms separated from the other. Uh, you can solve them all simultaneously in this combined uh, method. Okay, so let me just show you the source code for this. This is, uh, if you want to try this yourself or other problems, it's here under this pendulum motion in the documentation for high index DAE solutions if you just uh, search for it. Also put this link here in the video description and it has uh, just an explanation of the simple problem with the pendulum, the index zero to index three forms for the equations, and then um, the source code here for each of those. So you can see index zero, index one, index two code, and then finally the index three DAE code. If you want a little bit more information, this is also an article on initialization strategies for optimization of dynamic systems. In this article, it also talks a little bit about the index issue, but also you don't necessarily need to get consistent initial conditions for your differential and algebraic equation system. Many solvers require that for the index one solvers. And it shows the advantage of being able to initialize the DAE system without consistent initial conditions either. So uh, this one also has the um, pendulum example in it as well. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please let me know if you have any feedback.